Welcome to How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships from True Story FM. Today, let's get your toaster swole. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Seth Nelson. I'm here, as always, with my good friend, Pete Wright. Today, JT Tapas is a trainer, coach, and health counselor, and his practice is all about teaching others how living a fit and healthy, sustainable lifestyle can truly improve your daily life. Today, JT is going to talk to us about the things we put in the way of our health and how getting fit can actually improve how you feel as you move through your divorce. JT, or as I prefer to call him, Pete, coach. Welcome to the toaster. Seth, thanks for having me. That's, that's not, that you've, you actually have met one another. You're not just coming up with pet names for people now. <laughs> JT is one of my three current coaches that I have dealing with my health and fitness. Outstanding. And I have to say, let me just say out loud for the record, you look terrific. Well, thank you. More importantly, what JT's taught me, which we're going to talk about today, I feel is sustainable and I feel great. I have by working with JT uh, and we can talk a little bit about what we do because I think it will impact, kind of put the meat on the bones, as we say, to what JT's whole philosophy is. And I can be a testament to it works if you are dedicated and you stick to it. But the, the, the thing about that that I really want to stress is that it does take a team. It does take focus. And we can certainly talk through all that with, uh, with JT. But let's get to JT and talk to him about what he likes to do and what he's all about. Seth, thanks for having me. So, um, yes, I, I, I congratulate Seth because Seth is a, he's a, he's a one percenter, right? Uh, he has, uh, his discipline and his follow through is, is commendable. He's done amazing on the program. Uh, but he's a perfect example. We, we get a lot of people that come through our doors, uh, uh, at the gym and virtually as well that, that contact us and say, you know, I'm a busy, I'm a busy professional. I really don't have time for all of these things. And of course, uh, uh, Seth proves them wrong. Uh, he has a million things going on yet. He's been able to execute on them. And, and partially, you know, uh, the reason for that is the way we've crafted our program. Um, I think most, most diet programs, most exercise programs are focused on metrics. Uh, in other words, looking a certain way, uh, that aesthetic destination, whereas we focus more on, on the cognitive side, on, on the behavior side of things. And uh, that's really where the rubber meets the road. And, and on that front, Pete, before we kind of dive into what all that means. So JT has a, his BS in psychology with a master's in neuro-linguistic programming and cognitive processes. I don't even know what that means. I just know whatever he's taught and what he learned and he teaches to me is working. But he has multiple certifications, fitness, personal trainer, nutrition, life coach. He's got all these letters behind his name that I don't know what they even are. But here's the really cool thing. He's a certified health counselor, but he specializes in health and wellness. And so every time I talk to JT, it is a holistic approach to how you're living your life, even in stressful times. And he can get into the nitty gritty on how many fats you should eat a day and what about your carbs and what about your exercise. The true power, I believe, in what he does is he gives you the opportunity to reshape your thinking. So since I've been working with him, I'm not on a diet. I don't say I'm on a diet when my friends ask me what I'm doing. I say that I have a new nutrition plan. I, I have a nutritionist when I'm dealing with, with Coach JT, not some guy that's sending me supplements saying, you need to eat this or he's peddling this. Anything he ever tells me to buy, he's like, get it on Amazon. Well, I definitely got questions and, and I want to hear a comment, but I should add that JT is in the eye of the hurricane right now. And occasionally we'll get some rumbling in the background because it's uh, it's weather is having its way with uh, JT's location. So, oh, I thought that's like when he just turned it up when he thought that I ate a snicker bar. <laughs> and he hears a 
gambling happening. There's bad weather. Okay. Yeah, that was just, me grumbling in the back. It's just <laughs> punishment. That's right. That's right. It's the punishment yet to come. I, I really like the way you're both putting this because it seems to me that, that what we're really talking about is reprogramming the way we think about our bodies and our health, right? Because we are we, we have for some reason or another found that our programming has been damaged, right? I mean, is that is that a metaphor that works for you, JT? Yeah, we have all sorts of theories, right? I'm big bone. I'm from the Midwest. My mom was obese. My dad was obese. I'm destined to be obese. Uh, and and you know, and and let's be you know, let's 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 be uh, uh, honest here. In one percent of the situations, that that can come into play. Genetics are a real thing, but ultimately, it's a mathematical equation, right? We work with three variables: calorie deficit, calorie balance, cal- calorie surplus. And uh, the truth is the vast majority of us, if we're not watching what we're eating, uh, we're, we're consuming a surplus of calories. And, and of course, that uh, gets stored uh, as glycogen, aka sugar in the body. Everything we eat is converted to sugar for energy. Uh, some of it we use and some of it we store. And so when, uh, when we're in storage mode, uh, you know, that causes a, a series of problems and you know, health conditions, cognitive issues. Can I just say that? Uh, you know, when you, when we eat something that we, we, that dis- disagrees with our stomach, we get a stomach ache, but our brain has no mechanism to show us when we eat something that's not good for our brain. And we keep repeating that pattern over and over and over again. And so when we clean up our diet, the first thing that gets better is our cognitive health, which then allows us to make better choices. Uh, you know, we're cognitive human beings. We think, we feel, we act. And so this is one of the reasons why we feel that nutrition is one of the most tangible ways to, for lack of better words, you know, take, take control of your life. Do you hear that? The universe agrees, everybody. The universe agrees. You're exceptionally good at timing your most impactful statements, JT. That's amazing. Uh, well, I think that's I think that's so important. And now to pivot into divorce and and maybe Seth, not just about your journey, but as an attorney, when you see people come into you, how uh, how do you see? I mean, uh, it, do you observe that their lives, as they're you know going through the dissolution of marriage, are impacted in in these other ways? Absolutely every case, every case, it takes so much emotional strain and sucks out everything you do is always has the cloud of uncertainty in your mind. Where am I going to live? How are the finances going to work? What about the children? I've never been to court. I've got to call a lawyer. All those things that we talk about. Am I ever going to find someone again? Oh my God, why are you even asking me that? I never want to find anyone again. I'm not going through this process again. I know I can avoid this process if I never date anyone again. All that is happening, right? None of that is comfortable. But an ice cream sundae sure is comfortable. Yeah, right. A nice meal with some cream sauce. Well, it reminds you that there's good in the world. Isn't that what we're saying? <laughs> so. That is what some people call stress eating. Uh, JT, what do, you, what do you think of that? How do people respond? Talk, talk to us a little bit about when people are stressed, how they deal with it, and ultimately in unhealthy ways. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I'm glad you went there because uh, we call uh, food and, and, and nutrition, as we call food, the silent drug. It's the innocent drug, right? We need to eat is the excuse. Don't we need to eat to to live? And the answer is yes, but not in excess. And so then we go into what we call crutches, right? And these crutches comes in, uh, come in all forms, uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, food being the most abused drug uh, out there. And um, we, we lean into these things hard. And so sugar, sugar, uh, statistics show that sugar can be more addicting than any drug, right? Uh, and, and so, of course, we we lean into these things. We we feel the emotional pressure. We feel, uh, we feel bam, emotional pressure. Emotional pressure thunder. for the win. See that? <laughs> this guy's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the heavens confirm. Right. Um, <laughs> So, you know, uh, the first thing we do is we lean into food and, and, and these are things we, we speak to our, our clients about is, you know, we want, we want you to become very aware because clarity is power. We want, we want you to start seeing the things that you were 
when you're uh, the high and the low emotions, when you're sad, when you're bored, uh, you know, when you're depressed, what do you do? And so some people go to the bar, some people, you know, some people lean into drugs and most people lean into food. And so the question is not, are you addicted to food? It's what's the extent of your addiction? So we are all there to an extent. And our job as, as nutrition coaches is really pinpointing that and, and, and channeling those desires, those crutches in a, in a healthy direction. There's something called the divorce diet where people just stop eating. The stress is so great, Pete, that some people just lose weight, but in an unhealthy way. That makes total sense to me. And listening to what JT said, like I'm, I've been going through my own, I have my own <laughs> struggles with food. And I have learned in the process of sort of figuring out my relationship with food that I am what is called a fog eater, that I, I often eat not directly out of stress, but when I see something that I haven't, that I'm generally not allowed to have, or uh, that I feel like is somehow forbidden, or that my mother would tell me, you shouldn't eat that whole bag of Oreo cookies. I eat the whole bag of Oreo cookies. And I don't even know it. I just eat whatever is contraband and I don't even think about it. Right. And, and that's the, because I'm not intentionally, like as we're talking about intentionally eating, that is my natural bias. And when you say divorce diet, I, I know that's where I would go. Like I would gain 60 pounds in weeks because I would lose my intentionality, but it sounds like it goes the other way too. And so that that's great because so the divorce diet, we, we get a lot, we get lots of people that come through our programs, our nutrition programs that have just gotten divorced. And we see two spectrums. We see the person that says, you know, uh, uh, I, I've gained all this weight in this marriage. It was a bad marriage. And, and, and now that, you know, I've liberated myself from that. I, I'm, I want to get in the best shape of my life. What can you do for me? And then we get other people that come in and say, you know, um, I, I've lost all this weight because I haven't had anything to eat, you know, in, 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 in months, right? Um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not hungry. There's no appetite and I need to actually regain weight and get healthy again. We, we, we obviously work with both sides, but we, we probably get 30% of our members are people that are going through divorce. Um, and because, you know, and the vast majority of them, I need to look better than ever, right? They go through that crisis of, I'm going to show him or her, you know, what he or she missed out on. What they lost. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, Pete, in the divorce world, we call that the revenge body. Oh, <laughs> exactly. man. Yes. Okay. I have to tell and, you, like, there's there's something about that that's really exhilarating. <laughs> like the schadenfreude body. <laughs> I've been working with Coach to get the revenge body in case my girlfriend leaves me. I've told her this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she said, and she said, I'm very you know, much into prenuptial fitness. <laughs> yes. She said to me, you know, I've done a not so scientific study that proves that whoever is getting fit when they're in the relationship is actually having an affair because they're getting fit for somebody else. What? And I looked at her and said, an unscientific study? Where was this conducted? And she said, oh, me and my girlfriends when we were having a drink. <laughs> <Right>. Rigorous <laughs> said, empirical oh, okay. research, yeah. yeah. Also, we were yeah. a little drunk when we did our study. <laughs> yes, and, and, and I said, feel free to track me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the office, I'm at home, or I am doing fitness at, um, uh, at the gym, or like, track me anywhere you want to go, so. That's too funny. I'd also like to touch on a thing you said about, you know, that thing that most people say, don't eat this or don't, don't do that. And that's the first thing we actually do. And so, you know, the power of suggestion comes in many forms, right? It's like, Hey, would you like this or don't do this? The difference is, you know, before that thing is called to our attention, we delete the store and generalize that idea. When it's bought, brought to the forefront, it becomes an option. And, and so, you know, we often hear people say, well, I don't want to do this. And our question is, well, what do you want to do, right? I, I don't want to overeat, okay? So what, what do you want to do, right? And it may seem very simple, but we see people very focused on the things they don't, they don't want to do, and that's what they end up doing. And it's just simply the power of suggestion in reverse. Yeah, and, and I think it's, you know, when you say it sounds very simple, I think for people who don't have um, historically, uh, you know, been dealing with challenges around food, they don't recognize just how not simple it is. Right. It, it is hard to reprogram that story, to to reposition that. Right. But when I work with with coach, what he's told me when we started this journey and it is a journey. He said, I'm not going to tell you what you can't eat. 
you're an adult, you make your own decisions. But on this plan, I'm going to tell you what you can eat. (laughs) And so he listed out, Seth, for breakfast, you can have a protein. And then he described it in a way that is sustainable and it's not a diet. And so what I mean by that, Pete, it is a palm and a half of a protein. I don't have to weigh my food. I'm not getting out of scale. He goes, you can have six, which is basically a palm and a half, egg whites every morning, if that's what you want, and two helpings of vegetables, two handfuls. I make the best omelets, uh, egg white omelets, almost every morning. And I get to put a fat in, which he says is a thumb, so I throw some butter in there. Now, he has specific kinds that, that he likes us to use. And I make this really nice meal in the morning. And then he says, you're going to be hungry. And I eat that at seven, Pete. He says, you're going to be hungry at 10. You can have a protein shake. And here are all these different selections on what you can have. And then he says, for lunch, three hours later. And I'm like, really? I've already eaten breakfast. I've had a snack. And now I'm having lunch. He's like, yeah, this is what you can have. He explains it. And then he goes, three hours later at three, you can have another protein shake. And then at six o'clock, you can have dinner. And I'm like, JT, the first week, he's like, how are you doing? I said, I'm eating all the time. <laughs> and I'm full. But you're not eating a whole bag of Oreo cookies, right? I mean, that's that's the thing. That's that goes true. back to intentionality. And that's really important, right? What you eat matters. And this is where I want to go, JT. When you think about um, assumptions around getting fit, I just want to call out what we've been talking about here. Getting fit doesn't start with lifting heavy weights. Not at all. So we teach the complete opposite. And I'll tell you a little story on how that all came about. Uh, You know, what Seth was saying, we don't count calories. We don't count macros. We don't weigh food. We don't believe that those things are sustainable. They're efficient. They're not sustainable long-term. And so we want to stick to the, 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 the sustainable aspects of, of food, right? Daily food, what to do. Um, And so when we do it that way, what we're saying is, hey, we're going to give you the rules to the game, right? You go and play. And and I do it in my parenting. I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. And my daughter says, she'll say, well, can I, you know, I want to go do this. And I'll say, well, here's what could happen. A, B, and C, you choose. What do you think, you know, is best for you? And and I do the same with clients, right? So Seth, I believe at one point, I'm going to call him out here a little bit. He called me and he said something along the lines of, you know, I want to eat this thing. I said, well, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make sure you, you know, you expect the scale not to move on Saturday. And this is right at the beginning. I don't know if you remember this, Seth. And I said, you, you know, you have to adjust. Oh, I remember. And Pete's loving that you're calling me out. I'm telling yeah. you. Oh God. Yeah. Where is I, my cowbell? Oh, I, said, <laughs> I said, you can do it, but you're going to, you're going to have to, you know, just set yourself up for, you know, whatever expectations you had, you're, you're going to have to change those expectations. Right. I said, you make, you make that choice. Uh, that's your decision. Uh, but you're going to have to adjust your expectations. And, uh, I remember him <laughs> shooting back and saying, I, I think I'll just stay, stick with the plan. I said, great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably okay. You're about to eat something that's about as nutritional as that chair right there. So, yeah. uh, Pete, let yeah. me tell you when I'm in court and the judge is basically basically saying, you know, that dog don't hunt. I just move along. And that's what, that's what JT was doing to me there. (laughs) Smart. Smart. So here, here's the thing I think that people really need to think about. I think Pete, your point on intentionality is really important. Um, we don't even think about it when we cross the street that we look both ways, but we were taught and for a while we had to be intentional about it. And with sustainability on nutrition, eventually it becomes where you don't even have to think about it. You know what you need to do. And when you go out to a restaurant on the weekends and you want to have a nice meal, you can do that. But you just get intentional about it where you're going to say to the waiter, you know, can you steam that? Can you bake that? Can you grill that? Like, you're not looking for the big sauce. Like, there's ways to ask, and the restaurants will do it. And you can just look at your plate, and you do it so often, and you've been intentional for these days, weeks, months to retrain your mind that it makes your life a lot easier, not just in your eating, but everything else that you do. It's not about losing the weight, it's not about having a 
magazine cover body. It's about being healthy and how that makes you feel and sleep better. And then taking that to your life. And you know what? I can now, and I want JT to tell this story because he's told it to me before. I can now play with my children that I fought so hard in the divorce for to get time. And I can actually spend quality time with them. That's what we're talking about here. Not just, oh, another diet. Yeah, right. Right. What Seth is described, he described that without, you know, without, you know, so, so there's a process to exactly that sequence that he just described. Our program has three phases, reset, reboot, and Excel. When you look at those phases, they're dynamics. Okay. So we're going to eat this in phase one, do that phase two, do this in phase three, but truly what's happening, happening uh, in a more powerful way is the cognitive changes that are taking place. So, um, I can't remember the university right now, but they did a, a strong study on um, the three levels of change. And so those three levels of change say that the first uh, level of change is actually a, 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 uh, a level of where you're, where you're focused on dynamics, you're focused on a metric, right? So you come into a program, you say, okay, I'm going to be on this program for 90 days. You set some expectations and you're trying to meet that metric. And that's where most people land on most diets, right? They, they get to that goal. And then 70% of those people default back to their norm, normal settings because what happens after that is they don't continue level two, which is, so we have a sprint for us, which is six weeks and reset. Then you go on to reboot, which is the, you know, another four weeks inside of that phase. In that second phase, what we're doing is we're basically setting up uh, habits, daily habits that are going to get that person closer to their specific goal. So most people are focused on, on the vision. I want to get to X amount of weight. We create those little habits that are going to take them in that direction. But then ultimately phase three is where all things come together because it speaks about identity change. So if you try to meet a, a metric in the first phase, fine, you'll get there. Most likely you'll default if that's your only motivation. Phase two is you create those little processes. That's great. You'll sustain that until you have a coach. But then phase three becomes very, very sustainable because you don't depend on anyone else. And this is what we call identity change. And so the question then is, you know, GT, you're, I'm, I'm 43 years old. I've been working out since I was five years old. And uh, people will ask me, people that have known me for years, how do, you, how do you sustain this? How do you continue to eat well and exercise? And my answer to that is, I don't, I don't know any better. That's, that's, that's all I know how to do. It's part of my identity. And so what we do in these three phases is, is really get uh, our clients to a point of identity change where what Seth says, you go to the restaurant and you just now automatically are looking for the healthy things. You're no longer looking for the mac and cheese. And I'm not saying you can't do that because we do build space for those uh, times as well. But when the identity has shifted, you're now making decisions that are just natural to you. You're not exerting all this energy and disciplining yourself to do certain things. And that's why nine out of 10 people that come through our programs, you know, i I've been in the uh, South Tampa area for many years and I'll bump into them 10 years later and look at them and go, wow, you look amazing. What are you doing? The empty your bucket plan. I'm like, wow. So it's very, very sustainable and very simple. Two stories to support that. First, I, I feel like if you go down the road of trying to clean yourself up, clean up what you eat, feel good about yourself, do it for six weeks. And if you doubt, go have a Big Mac, if that's something that you love. I feel like that is my test because I always eat a Big Mac and it tastes fantastic. And for like 12 hours, I'm a gastrointestinal disaster. And uh, that is a reminder of the importance of food. The other piece is directly to your point. My mother has uh, been living for four decades with severe celiac disease completely changed her life, right? And she told me once she said, you know, you're struggling to do this. I said, you love chocolate. You love chocolate cake. Why don't you eat a lot of chocolate and chocolate cake? Like you can't, that's not a thing. She said, you have to understand that if I eat chocolate cake, I'm in bed for a week or more. I am, my autoimmune kicks in and I'm in <laughs> just disaster straits. To me, chocolate cake has become a poison. And once I reprogrammed my thinking around what poison does to my system, it became really easy not to focus on the chocolate cake. It's easy to let it go. Uh, and that, that sort of thinking like, it was really impactful to me right? To, as a reminder that the things that I love, if I'm really in tune with what my body is doing, if, I'm, if I am aware, then 
uh, I have a much better chance of of kicking those, as you say, those habits and replacing the habits with things that make me feel good and nourished and strong. The challenging thing uh, for people that get to that level of change is actually having the patience. Uh, statistics show it's 61 days before you actually incorporate a habit uh, that, that you know becomes sustainable is that when you do things like the pizza and the burgers and the things that uh, are so, you know, so, are so appealing, you secrete anabolic chemicals like dopamine, epinephrine, serotonin, all these happy chemicals are secreted into your system. Now, if you wait long enough and you let that lifestyle take place uh, of, of your life, right? You, you, you continue to do that sustainably. You start to get the affirmation from the mirror, from others, and, and you start feeling great. And so, of course, that also secretes those same chemicals. And so now you're replacing, you're replacing those dopamine hits that you were getting from food by simply living a lifestyle that just makes sense. So I've got, I've got two questions on this. One is, which I think I want to tackle first, is when people are going through a divorce, it is hard enough with all of those changes to really ask them to eat healthy is a big ask during the, the stresses of a divorce. Now, we've got lots of people that listen to this show and, and some have already gone through the divorce. And so that's, a, I would say, an easier time to make those life changes because you've gotten through the worst of the divorce, it's over, and, and now you, you can focus on you. When sometimes you're going through a divorce, you're focused on your children. And I'm not saying you don't do that afterwards, but I think you get what I'm saying. So one, is there a better quote time? And I'm not trying to kick the can down the road and say, don't do it. But just from your experiences, is there a better time to start this program and to really be committed to it? Because I know on your questionnaire, it says from one to 10, how committed are you to it? And, and I put down a nine out of 10, Pete, which was really good because the very next sentence down on the next page, you had to turn the page or scroll down, it said, if you didn't do an eight or above, I'm not interested in working with you. Well, and, and how does that, like, uh, like how is that tested? Like, you put fill out that form, and you might say, yeah, I feel like a nine, but when do you realize that you're actually a six? Like, when does the truth come out? Hitting the bottom of the barrel is important for success, right? I don't think we change unless we have enough pain in our life, right? And, and uh, you know, when we see people skip into our program, we're like, hmm, this person is not going to do well. In other words, the person that says, hey, I need to lose 15 pounds because I have a wedding coming up or I need to fit into this dress. As much as we want to help everyone, I simply say, I am not your guy, right? When I hear people say, hey, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, whether that is physically, emotionally, you know, whatever it is uh, that's, that's, that they're, they've gotten to that point where they're just, they need to change that's the person that does the best, right? And so, yes, the vast majority of people say, you'll ask them, and, and I think for the most part, people are honest. You know, I have people that say, oh, I'm a six, I'm a seven. And of course, you know, in that interview, we interview them uh, after that questionnaire. And inside of those 45 minutes, they think they're interviewing us. We're truly interviewing them to see if they're serious. One of the questions we ask, two of the questions that we ask that are super important is, are you ready in your heart of hearts? Meaning, you know, you're, 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 you're going to do this. You know, you need to do it. You either got a bad doctor's report. You just went through divorce. You feel like crap. You can't get out of bed. You know, uh, you're, you're, you're stagnated in different areas of life. Are you there? And, and, you know, people say yay or nay. And then are you coachable? Right. And are you coachable means we live in a country that where every single day there's a fad diet. Everyone's an expert. Uh, we, you know, <laughs> when we work with uh, physicians or we work with their wives, you know, it's usually the battle for the next 90 days of them saying, well, my husband said, I said, but you told me you were coachable. I am the coach. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, those are two questions that are super important. Uh, we want to work with people that are, that have hit the bottom of the barrel because there's enough pain in their lives to actually make a change. Let me talk to that too. And I'm just going to share this with everybody. Um, it was in February of 2021 when my mom was, uh, her cancer came back and it, it was bad. And, and we thought that it was probably terminal, you know, it, it was going to be the end of the road here and it was going to be a tough road. My focus was where it needed to be was on my mom and on my dad and my family. And I felt myself not sleeping well, being at my parents' house late, caring for her and caring for my dad. And I was driving home and 
picking up fast food that tasted good, Pete, but I was just going through the drive through not thinking about it, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, getting a Coke along the way, you know, just what you need at that hour. And I was putting on weight like there was no tomorrow. My cousin, who happens to be a doctor, came down really to visit my mom for the last time. And he was telling me how he was focused on his nutrition and, and losing weight. And I said, I got to do something because I am on a tipping point here where if I keep going the way I'm going, and I don't know how much longer my mom has, but I'm going to be there every step of the way. At the end of all this, I, I could be in really bad health. And, and we started working with Coach. And even during that stressful time, the intentionality of the routine of eating healthy helped get me through that hard time. And now she, she passed away in May and, and here we are in October. People that had not seen me since my mom's funeral to now when they see me, they're like, oh my God, what have you done? And I just say proper nutrition and exercise. That's the two things. Huh, amazing. <laughs> I know it's not a big secret, but when you talk about hitting the bottom of the barrel and being focused on something, uh, I, that's what JT, I think, is talking about, at least personally to me. I believe that everything does happen for a reason, and, you, and I'm a pretty positive guy. So through my mom's illness and death, there's been some very positive things that have happened, and one of them is I am focused on proper health, and that has changed my life. Just since May um, or February when I started this. And when I say change my life, Pete, I am no longer on cholesterol medicine. My doctor's taking me off of it. I was at an acid reflux medicine, taking it off. I was having some supplements, vitamins and whatever, off because my nutrition is such dialed in. I'm getting them the old fashioned way through food. Right, right. <laughs> right. So it's whatever it is it needs to motivate you. That's what we're talking about. And I, I just want to tell when you when you say bottom of the barrel, those were rough times, you know, when you have a parent about to pass. So just kind of take that to heart. Yeah, you asked the question, uh, Seth, and you said, you know, what about, you know, you're already going through all this emotional stress and maybe someone's not ready to jump on a, on a diet right now. And they're saying, well, you know, I already have enough going on. I don't, I don't need uh, to tap into more of my, my effort and discipline here. And, and what I would say is, <laughs> is the opposite of that, right? Because that's sort of thinking of, thinking of, of this in a way where I'm sick and I'm going to wait to get better. And then I'm going to go to the doctor, right? And you know, I think the 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 important thing to point out here is that in our coaching, our coaching is is very much focused on the cognitive side of things. And so in these conversations that we're having where we're interacting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, it's hyper accountability, right? So there, there's a lot of touch points throughout the week where we're interacting with clients. And in those spaces, we have some great opportunities to speak about, <laughs> can I just say 90% of it is life. And helping clients sort through situations uh, that are not even diet related, but that actually open that person up to, 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 to be able to do more and want to do more, not because we're telling them to do something. We're simply asking powerful questions. You know, I, it, it can look like this, uh, JT, I, I am, uh, you know, I'm depressed. I can't get out of bed. I don't feel well. And, and, and so in that conversation, we'll say, well, how, how, how do you want to feel? Well, I'd love to feel great. Okay. Would you like to look at some options? Right. And then, you know, just, just asking questions. We call them Socratic questions, right? Socrates was great at asking questions. So we ask all these questions and in that process, we allow them to make their own choices and they feel empowered because we didn't tell them what to do. We just ask some powerful questions and that's the basis of counseling. And, and, and you know, you sit with the psychiatrist and this is why they ask you <laughs> these questions. So that many questions. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, how does that make you feel? <laughs> and it seems like with, as, as you're saying, you know what I originally, I'd made some notes and I was thinking about, you know, let's talk about some of the, the obstacles people put in their own way. And it sounds like you've just knocked them all down, right? Well, but exercise is boring. I don't like to exercise alone. I'm not motivated. I don't have time. I can't afford it. Uh, I'm afraid of getting injured. I'm, I'm, I'm just scared of the whole process. I'm too stressed and anxious. Like it, all of those things by just asking that one question, how do you want to feel? Like there's a path to get you to the other side of all these things. If you really are clear with how you want to feel. 
so in that light, like how how when you approach people who come to you thinking about this one that that really strikes me, how does this process affect relationships? Right. It seems like you you might either ha- either have a Pied Piper kind of situation where somebody might drag the other one along or motivate the other partner, or could it lead to uh, some sort of rocky patch in a relationship oh that was my question one person does it the other doesn't one gets the revenge body a little yeah. early the other one's eating the chocolate cake and they're like i'm out yeah um it's no longer fun for me to go to a bar have a couple drinks and eat all this stuff i'm out seems like there are probably signals along that path that you, sh- you might want to be aware of if if you're <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> right. going down this road. how can getting healthy end your relationship that's our question right pete that's what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the title of the show right okay so not too long ago, I had a guy come on my program and he had 45 pounds to lose. Busy, busy executive, always traveling, uh, big foodie, love food. He said it, you know, in the beginning, he said, man, I, I love food. And he said, I, when I go to a city, I'm looking for cigar rated restaurants and I'm a big wine drinker. He says, do you think you could do something for me? And I said, sure. I said, do you want to do something? <laughs> he said, yeah, that's why I'm here. And I said, great. So we got on the plan and this guy, you know, super diligent. I knew he was going to do awesome because he's, he's a, you know, uber successful guy. And I said, all you have to do is take those principles that, you know, made you successful in your career and apply them to this, the diligence, the follow through all those things. So he gets on the plan and I kid you not 65 days in, he had hit his goal already. And, and I kept checking in and saying, how are things going? He said, man, I feel amazing. This is life changing. I haven't felt like this since I was in my twenties. This is so incredible. Next thing you know, I get a phone call from his, from his wife. She says, this is the worst thing that has happened to our marriage. His wife (laughs) calls you. Oh yeah. And I took a deep breath and said, Whoa, okay. Uh, And he said, you know, we don't go to restaurants anymore. We don't enjoy (laughs) ourselves anymore. He is, I've never seen him this disciplined. I think he loves, he loves the diet more than he loves me. And, and, uh, you know, and all these things. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, wow. And, and, uh, so I said, well, you know, he's getting ready to transition and inside of that metabolic flexibility, which allows you to, you know, practice an 80-20, he's going to go back to normal. You guys are going to go to these restaurants. Well, you know, long story short, and he's in another country, so I feel comfortable speaking of, you know, obviously not giving any names. A couple of weeks later, uh, he left and I, you know, and she came to, she came and sat in front of us and told us the story and he asked her for a divorce, right? And I'm like, whoa, like this has never happened to me in 20 plus years. Wow. And I said, what happened? And uh, and I spoke with him and he said, <laughs> he said, you know, um, I, I, I realized that I was playing uh, the game small and I, there's a lot more to life. And, you know, obviously that says a lot about what was going on in their relationship, but he started looking like a million bucks and, you know, um, she didn't, she didn't come along side and, I guess he got distracted by the attention he was getting outside and ended up getting a divorce. So I wouldn't generally tell this story because it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's, it's not helping my cause, but you know, I, I want to be very transparent. Can I just say though, that nine out of 10 times the husband or the wife will come on the program and they will just do the same thing. The spouse is doing, and they get sometimes better results even though they're not being coached or simply doing what the wife is doing, just following all the things that, you know, they're doing and, and they lose a ton of weight. And then I get, you know, of course, the testimonies of people saying, you know, I lost 35 pounds on the, on the program. My husband that didn't do the program, but we ate the same foods, lost 50 pounds, right? Guys lose weight faster than women. And so, um, you know, that's the reason I love bringing couples uh, on board uh, because it's, it's double the accountability and, uh, you know, we've actually made, made it easier for couples to come on because we know the success rate goes up eight out of 10 people that come through a program are incredibly successful individually couples that come through nine out of 10 are incredibly successful. And Pete, I was doing this and I was losing weight. And I mean, you know, my girlfriend, she's like, I want to do it too. And so she came on with coach and it was much more enjoyable to do it together because when I was just doing it. She would say, well, I can't eat that or whatever. And we had that little struggle because we, we like to go out. We, we're foodies. She likes to go where there's really good drinks. She, she likes wine, but it gives her headaches. So if she's going to have a drink, she wants it to be a good drink, you know, not a rum yeah. and coke. Yeah, right. right? So we, we had that little struggle. And I would say, babe, you let's go to the restaurant. Get what you want. 
I can adapt to no matter what restaurant we go to by what JT's teaching me. But then she joined in on it and we've done it together and we go to these different phases and doing it together really helps because one, it's accountable. Two, you're in it together. Three, you can look at each other and be like, oh my God, I really dreamt about ice cream last night. What about you? <laughs> and she was like, oh yeah, <laughs> mine mine was that fancy drink or mine was pizza. <laughs> yeah. But, but doing it together is, is certainly great, but it's like anything else. It's only if that person wants to do it. But I want to circle back because I mentioned this story, JT, and I think stories can really tell something and we are about saving your relationships. Share Share with the listeners and with Pete about the gentleman when he was uh, taking his daughter up to bed because I, I think that's really what we're talking about too yeah the michael story is is you know that's one of our we have so many cool stories but this is one that has just it just rocked my world because it really really gave me an understanding of what we we do and it's not just you know these are not vanity metrics this is literally life this is bringing life back into excuse me for the, you know, being redundant into people's lives. Right. And this, this, uh, this, uh, young man comes in, uh, on a Friday afternoon, it's about three o'clock. I'm getting ready to go home. And, uh, I see a shadow of a giant guy that looked to be about six, six, you know, my trainer, I, uh, pegged him at three, 300 plus, And I said, wow, you know, I'm five, eight. So everyone's a giant to me. So <laughs> he walks in and he sits across from me and he says, you know, um, I got to tell you a story. He says, I, um, he says, I have dinner with my wife and my two young daughters uh, each night. And uh, after dinner, I, I play with my daughters for 10 minutes. He says, I can't play with them for more than 10 minutes because my ankles, my knees, and my lower back hurt. He says, it's not just pain. It's excruciating pain. And he said, last night, um, I played with them. I, I, I was taking my daughter upstairs to put her to bed. And she said, Daddy, can you, can you bring me up the stairs like a horsey? He said, JT, I put her over my shoulders. I tried to go up the first step and I realized I, I wasn't going to be able to go up. He says, I quickly, quickly put her down. She said, daddy, why aren't we going up? He said, daddy's too fat. Daddy can't bring you up the stairs. And he said, with tears in his eyes, he put his daughter to bed and he went in his room and he cried like a baby. And he said he cried like a baby because at this point, not only had he incarcerated his own body, he felt like he had incarcerated his own body, but now it was affecting his girls. And the constant thought in his mind was that one day he was going to fall over and, and he wasn't going to be there for his girls. At this point, he had made himself a type 2 diabetic. Uh, he was hypertensive. He had high blood pressure. And he was taking 17 different types of medication based on, on his weight. And uh, he said, uh, you know, I, I, he said, when I managed to get it together, I went online. I did some research. I see what people are saying about you. But I, I wanted to come here face to face, man, you know, man to man. And for you to tell me if you can help me or not. He says, if you can't help me, I need you to let me walk out that door because my life depends on it. <laughs> I said, woof. All right, there's no pressure, right? I looked at him and I asked him that question. I said, if you're ready in your heart of hearts and you're coachable and you understand that this is not a sprint, but a jog, and you're willing to put in the work, I can certainly help you. He came on the program. 60 days later, I got a phone call from him. He says, uh, I just want to let you know, I got my blood work back. My type two diabetes is in remission. I'm off of blood pressure medication. I'm no longer hypertensive. He says, and I'm, I'm, I'm on, you know, I'm on my way to getting off of all these medications. My doctor was blown away. He says, I'm 60 days in, I'm 47 pounds down. He said, but more importantly, you need to know that tonight for the first time, I was able to go up the stairs with my daughter over my shoulders. And he said, and the look in my little girl's eyes, he says, I'll never erase. And that man, um, you know, the reason there, there's so many powerful moments to that story, but more importantly, Michael shocked me because Michael is a back of the woods type of guy on orientation day. He said, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. What can you do for me? <laughs> and I, you know, I thought to myself, man, I'm not gonna be able to do anything for this guy. He's so limited that he, he doesn't eat vegetables. He doesn't eat salads. Well, he's now, you know, a year and nine months into, you know, graduating the program. He has radically changed his life. He's off of every medication. He's super healthy. And, uh, he eats now a variety of foods. He takes pictures at Whole Foods and Sprouts, you know, eating different types of vegetables and proteins. And it just goes to show that he's, he's changed his relationship to food. And, 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 you, and if you ask him, he'll say, I'm not on a diet. He says, this is what I choose to do now. Yeah. And, and Pete, I wanted, I wanted Coach to share that because that's what we're about, right? It's, it, it's not the look in the mirror and flexing. It's carrying your little girl up the stairs. And I'll share with you, Pete. I, I mean, I've told you this. You've seen the pictures. 
I went out to Salt Lake City with uh, my son Kai, and he has gotten into rock climbing. And, you know, we live in flat Florida, and we've gone to this indoor climbing gym. And we went out there and hired a guide and did some climbing. And the guide goes, yeah, you guys are good. Let's go on what's called a multi-pitch, where the guide climbs up, sets the ropes. You climb up and meet him. You, you stop. That's the first pitch. He climbs up again, sets the ropes. You climb up, you meet him, and you keep going. We did what's called a, a multi-pitch, three of them. And we were 450 feet up the side of a mountain rock climbing. And there was no way I could have ever had that experience with my son unless I was healthy enough to make that happen. And I, I will tell you, that was the first time I was ever proud that my son was proud of me. Wow. He was like, Dad, you did it. Well, and how powerful is that that that, that was the first time you had that experience? And your son... He's an older teen now. Oh, he's 17. Like, it's been a lot of years you've been with your son and only just now met this experience. Right. And we've always done a lot of things together. And I'm very fortunate. And my view is the most precious thing we have is time. And none of us know how much we have of it. Right. Because without time, we don't get to do anything else we want to do. Spend time with our loved ones. Have a fulfilling career. All of those things. So how do you choose to spend your time? And when you can make the daily decisions intentionally to have a healthy diet, to take care of yourself, that potentially is going to give you more time to do everything else that you do and that you fight for in a divorce. You fight for time with your kids, right? Yeah. So let, let's use it. Yeah. Fight for healthy time with your kids every week and fight to live a long and healthy life so you can see them become wonderful adults and live a long time. Right. Absolutely. I've had people say to me, well, you know, the guy that wrote the running book fell and had a heart attack. He fell over and had a heart attack, you know? And so, and then my, my answer to that is, is, is but that guy lived quality of life. <laughs> you know, he had, he had, uh, you know, some underlying issues that uh, caused his heart attack, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not how long we're here, but the quality, right. And, and being able to, to enjoy that with our family and friends and, and, and being able to have the energy, because at the end of the day, that's, this, this is what we talk to our clients about. It's not about the way you look. That's great. That's the icing on the cake, but how you feel, because from there you can be more creative. You can, you can do more, you can be more. And, and so, uh, you know, and it all starts through proper nutrition. JT, before we wrap up, because I, we, you know, you, you got a lot of people to coach. Uh, how do you handle all this over the holidays? It seems like a risky time uh, for folks to, who love food. How do you how do you coach? Yeah, so you know, we only live once, right? And uh, family is important, and and so we realize yeah, that things are going to happen, right? And so what we do is we say, hey, it doesn't have to be a free fall boat. So first and foremost, let's plan around uh, the things that we know are going to happen, right? So let's plan. Let's plan for the mishaps because they're coming. And there's more power if you know that you're actually going to do something and you allow yourself to do it versus just falling into it. You're going to be better, uh, you know, mentally. You're going to you're going to refocus when it's you know the next day or whenever you decide to get back on track. So, let's say for example, uh, family's meeting for, you know, for lunch that day. Everyone's coming over. There's pasta. There's you know there's all these things that we're not supposed to be eating uh, in the meantime. So let's do that. Let's plan for that meal. But then breakfast needs to be on point. Uh, let's start the day off right because whatever starts off right ends right. And so we're going to do our, our, our power walk, which is one of the things that we talk about, one of our best kept secrets. Let's start with our power walk on an empty stomach. Let's have a good breakfast after that. Let's have that mid-morning you know, uh, shake so that when lunch comes around, you're not ready to eat an elephant because you've had two really good meals. You've started off cognitively in the right way because you're exercising. Now, when you sit down and you see all this delicious food, number one, you're not starving because you've had all the right meals. So you're just going to eat a little bit of that. So you're going to minimize that impact. And then because you did cardio for 45 minutes to an hour, you're going to have it in the back of your head running saying, ah, you know, I don't really need all that. And maybe you just do a little bit of it versus saying, you know, it's the holidays. Let me just let, let it be a free fall. And so it's really planning and proactively choosing to do certain things and choosing not to do other things. Everybody needs to listen to that because that's not how we do holidays here. What we do with holidays is there's a big meal coming up and there's going to be wine soaked mushrooms and there's going to be lots of potatoes and there's going to be meat 
and I'm not going to eat a thing so that I can save myself for this meal on which I will gorge myself. So I that may be the most powerful thing you've said in this whole thing. In, in a lot of powerful things that you have dropped over the last 45 minutes. Thank you. This is good. This is great. I, I uh, you know, my dad had a quadruple bypass a couple of years back and the cardiac uh, the cardiologist came out and and pointed at me and said yeah you got some things you need to look at uh and that's a that's just one of those smack in the face reminders that we're not here very long and i have a lot of agency in how long i'm here i have a lot of control it's just a matter of taking it yeah uh this this has been fantastic jt coach thanks for hanging out with us you want to can can you plug something where should people go to learn more about your work Sure. Absolutely. So emptyyourbucketplan.com is uh, our website. Uh, you can get all the information on there, schedule an appointment, no strings attached. I always say, hey, if you come on board, we're, we're the right fit. Awesome. If not, you'll walk away with three tangible things that you can do that will radically change your life for free. And, and virtual. Like this is, you work with people all over. That's in the, so you're listening to the, the, that thunder that's coming from the echo from the Andes mountains. So I'm actually in South America right now. And I am currently working with about 78 <laughs> uh, clients uh, all over the world. Andes mountains. Yeah. I've got like the Bethany Mall down the street from me. <laughs> Andes Mountains. That is a dope plug, man. Thank you for uh, right. thank you but so wait, much for that. But Pete, you and I are meeting after this for pizza and beer at the mall, right? Yeah, right. Just checking. <laughs> right. I'll meet you at Pizza Schmitza for a hand toss. All right. right. The all you can eat pizza yeah. buffet, brother. <laughs> uh, and a nice Outst tall glass standing. of beer. Oh. Outstanding. JT Tavius, thank you so much for hanging out with us uh and thank you for having me and uh, on behalf of of jt and america's favorite uh divorce attorney seth nelson i'm pete wright everybody we'll catch you next time right here on how to split a toaster a divorce podcast about saving your relationships seth nelson is an attorney with nelson coster family law and mediation with offices in tampa florida while we may be discussing family law topics, how to split a toaster is not intended to, nor is it providing legal advice. Every situation is different. If you have specific questions regarding your situation, please seek your own legal counsel with an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction. Pete Wright is not an attorney or employee of Nelson Coster. Seth Nelson is licensed to practice law in Florida.